My name is Dr. Nathaniel Weaver, and I need to warn you about something, something I created. I have spent the last few months in a state of perpetual fear, constantly looking over my shoulder, knowing that somewhere out there, a monster I unintentionally brought into this world is lurking, biding its time. It all started in a sterile, brightly lit laboratory deep within the confines of a bio-research facility. The air always smelled faintly of antiseptic, mingled with the metallic tang of lab equipment. I had been working on genetic modifications aimed at enhancing cognitive functions and physical abilities in rodents. The potential applications for medicine were enormous, or so I convinced myself. Late one night, I was alone in the lab, save for the faint hum of fluorescent lights and the rhythmic beeping of monitoring machines. My hands trembled slightly as I injected a final serum into the last of a batch of albino rats. I could smell the faint odor of the chemicals mixed with the scent of my own nervous sweat. I wiped my brow, pushing back a wave of unease. Something about this batch felt different, more volatile. For a while, everything seemed normal. The rats appeared healthier, more alert, but soon they began exhibiting strange behaviors. They were more aggressive, their eyes gleaming with an unnatural intelligence. They grew larger, their muscles more defined. I remember the first time I saw one of them standing on its hind legs, staring at me through the glass of its enclosure. Its eyes were like tiny, glimmering coals filled with a malevolent awareness that sent chills down my spine. Then came the night. Everything went wrong. I was working late again. The familiar sense of the lab enveloping me like a suffocating blanket. Suddenly an alarm blared. I rushed to the containment room, my heart pounding so loudly I could feel it in my throat. The smell of burnt wiring and panic filled the air as I saw that the reinforced glass of the rat enclosures was shattered. They were out. In the ensuing chaos, I managed to contain most of them, but not before they had inflicted serious injuries on some of the lab staff. I saw things that haunt my nightmares. A colleague's face torn open, the lifeless eyes of another staring at the ceiling as blood pooled around their body. The facility was placed on immediate lockdown, the air thick with the scent of fear and disinfectant as we scoured every inch to find the last of the rodents. We never found one of them. One rat, larger and more cunning than the rest, had vanished. I still remember the feeling of dread that settled in the pit of my stomach when we realized it was gone. That particular rat had always unnerved me the most, its gaze following me with an intensity that seemed almost human. Days turned into weeks, and the search yielded nothing. The authorities assured the public that the situation was under control, but I knew better. I could feel its presence, a lurking dread that clung to me wherever I went. I couldn't sleep. Every rustle in the darkness Every creak of my house settling sent my heart racing. I would wake up drenched in sweat, the scent of fear hanging in the air, my ears straining for the sound of tiny claws scratching against wood or metal. I tried to go about my life, but the guilt and fear gnawed at me. I became a recluse, my home transforming into a fortress of locks and barriers. The world outside felt hostile and unsafe, and I couldn't shake the feeling that it was watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And then the attacks began. Reports of strange, violent incidents started trickling in from various parts of the city. Pets found mutilated, their bodies torn apart with a savagery that defied explanation. People reported feeling watched, their homes broken into, without any clear signs of entry. The smell of death seemed to linger in the air wherever these incidents occurred. 
a grim reminder of the terror lurking unseen. I knew it was the rat. My creation had escaped, and it was evolving, learning, growing more dangerous. The authorities were clueless, attributing the attacks to wild animals or deranged individuals. But I knew the truth. I could almost smell its presence, a distinctive blend of musk and decay that haunted my nightmares. Now I'm reaching out to you. You need to be aware of your surroundings. Listen carefully to the silence of the night. Watch for the glimmer of red eyes in the dark. If you hear strange noises, if you sense something watching you, don't dismiss it. I can no longer protect you. I can barely protect myself. All I can do is warn you, plead with you to be vigilant. There's a killer out there, a mutant rodent with a mind far more dangerous than any common animal. It's my fault, and it's my burden to bear. But you, you need to stay safe. If you smell something strange, a foul mix of chemicals and rot, if you hear scratching in your walls or see shadows darting in the corners of your vision, don't hesitate. Seek help, fortify your home, and pray that it's not already too late. Remember, it only takes one mistake, one moment of inattention, and then, like me, you'll be haunted by the knowledge that somewhere out there, a monster of unimaginable terror is waiting, watching, preparing to strike. Stay safe, and whatever you do, never let your guard down.